Yeah. Yeah, right, we're back again, hopefully recording. Um, fingers crossed we're recording anyway. Yep, yeah. time is going around, so we're recording. So I've picked up this nice bluey, purpley grey. It actually looks more bluey and purpley under the light. I'm using, in my art room, I have um, daylight bulb above me. And they are better than your standard bulbs for a white light. Now, most artists do like to work under natural light. Sadly, this room does have a window, but I don't get a great deal of natural light coming in. So... I find for me it's easier to close the blind and use the daylight light. I also have two daylight um, lamps should I need that little bit of extra light which for some of my work it can be very handy. So this is very, very fine, fluffy. You can see it's very fluffy, soft and silky. So nice to work with in the sense you can literally just do what I just did and just pull the fibres away from the needle so you don't use too much of the fibre. Now... That is a little bright, the blue. So I'm going to get a grey. Just take some of these fibres away. That's the only problem with this stuff. It is so fluffy and fine that it can be a bit of a awkward to work with. But you work with what you have. And as that is what I have, that is what I'm working with. So, I'm going to find a piece of grey grey. Which I don't seem to have with me at the moment, of course. So I have a tub of mixed um, mixed wool and fibres and mixed greys. I've got warm greys, cold greys, mid-tones. And I think we, we need a bit of warm, a warm dark grey, but not too brownish. So open up. And I'm going to use this one that's on the top. This is quite a coarser wool, um, as you can see, and it's it's a nice sh mid shade of grey. And I'm just going to go over the top with my fine needle again. As I said. Everybody does these things differently. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are maybe watching this and going, oh, that's not how you do it. It doesn't work if you do it that well. It works for me. <laughs> so everybody's different. And you have to do with what works for you. So I'm just going to trim the edges of that. And as you can see, that's changed that blue into a grey blue. So we've still got the colour there, but it's just changed it and brought the tone down a bit. So my pad's just gone off. That's it. Back up and running. Okay. Now I've got a very harsh line now between the black and the grey 
and really I want it to blend. I want it to look like it's all one piece and it's working together. So I'm going to go back into the black and I'm literally just taking three or four fibres. I'm going to place that over the top and again with the fine needle I'm just going to create a bit of a blend line. This can be a little time consuming but I find it does work quite nicely. I don't want to darken the purple too much but I do want it to look like it's all one piece of skin and not two separate bits. Now you see me doing this a lot. I'm trying to catch, I have about two fibres there, which I'm just trying to catch so I can then stop them wafting around in the air and place them down onto my felt. Now I have a little dark patch, which is quite common, as you know yourself. So I'm just flicking it with a needle just to lift the patch and the fibre and help me blend it. Now you see that's much better. I've not got that big dark patch that's sticking out like a sore thumb. Okay. So that's looking much nicer. Yep, happy with that. Now across the top of the eye, the eyelid itself is quite grey. So I'm going to use the same grey, but this time it doesn't have the purple underneath. It's just going to be the grey. I'll stick to my bigger needle otherwise I could be there all day and I'm just gonna fill this space up here it's not marked out but I know it's there because I can see from my reference photo and it's not too thick it's just just a nice grey line which does have some white highlights on it, so that will be a little challenging, no doubt. So now the eyelid also does not go all the way down to the black. Just about in line with the edge of the eye. So I'm going to stop here and go back the other way. Again, just trying to catch those fibres and go back to create my eyelid. Now, the eyelid is higher than the eyeball, so we obviously don't make it too 3D, but enough so that it actually does make a difference. And a lot of that will be done using colour rather than having one higher than the other. There we go. Just lift that. Now it's a bit difficult to see the eyelid because it is quite light and it blends in with the the material that we're using. So that has a few white highlights on it. So again I'm gonna go back in with my ice white and I'm just twisting it a little just a tiny bit just to help me see the fabric at my age glasses sometimes aren't enough you need a little extra help so I'm just going to put a little highlight there and again you know if you put too much in it's no big deal you can just come along and take it back out again it's not not the be all and end all. So I've just got that little white bit there. And then I've got 
another little white bit here. So again, using a fine needle, I'm just going to poke it in enough so it stays where it's supposed to be. scissors just take the excess off so they will stand out a lot more in a minute now we just want to lift it away from that black outline that we did earlier we can always go back and put another black outline on but I think I've just put this a little bit low so I'm just lifting it a fraction there we go. Okay, so that's the upper eyelid, which is very difficult to see at the moment. But here I have an off-white, which is what I would call a white with a hint of cream. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that across the top with my thick needle and this is going to form the base of the face the base color when we do drawings and paintings the more colors you can add to a piece of work the more natural it starts to look and when you look at your reference photo closely, there will be a base colour. And on this particular beauty, I'm going to use the off-white. Now that's not the colour of his skin, because his skin is black. And I can see that from the scars that he has on his face. Being a lion, he's obviously fought for his ladies but if I go in with all black it's then going to be very very difficult to cover it nicely so rather than do that I can just add the black scars over the top and then if they come out too dark I can just put a bit of this over the top of that to dull the look down a bit so this is the start of the face. I'm not going to put too much in because I'm just framing the eye. I just want to make sure that I've got all the right colours in all the right places for me. And it, it starts to look like a, a lion's eye. So I'm going to put a bit at the bottom as well. between the, the black outline and the grey and just you can use your needle to just take the excess fibres away from the eye um, it's always very noisy this thicker needle but I've got the foam behind now ordinarily I would have pulled this off the foam two or three times by now um, because there's nothing more annoying for me than having the foam stuck to the back of my work. And it does make life easier in the long run. But with this setup, I'm not able to lift it. So I'm just going to have to be very gentle when I pull the fibres back out of the foam. Now, some of you use bags of rice and all sorts of brushes and different things and you work with what suits you work with what makes you comfortable because you know it's it's all about enhancing your work not changing your work so I've just got a bit of an overlap across that that eye with the white so I've just cut those few fibers just so I can then go underneath so as you can see now just giving that little bit 
we can find the eye. Just going to put a little bit around here. Now this bit on my reference photo is actually that beautiful dusky orange tone that these majestic animals have. But having the cream underneath it will help bring out the fibres. Again, that's my phone going, beeping away. Someone's messaging me. I'm not doing this live because I don't even know if it's actually working. Um, hopefully it is and I won't have to redo it. But And I'm not brave enough to do it live. I can always edit out the bits I like once I've worked out how to do that. So I'm just going to rather than cut these fibres off because I'm going to use it as a base colour I'm just going to tuck them in okay so that's starting to get a bit more like a lion eye and I think what I need to do now is go back with that bright bright orange that I had and I'm just going to put literally just half that amount literally just a few fibres back into that eyeball I think it just needs a little lifting that's quite light the eyeball but we do want it to stand out and this is where artistic license comes in you don't have to follow the reference photo perfectly if you want to give it that little bit more vava voom, then this is a good way of doing it. And I'm just going to, just that tiny bit, just lifted it up a bit. I'm going to add a little bit more green as well. There we go. Just enough to give it a bit more oomph. The green's a little bit coarser, so... Now remember when I've got that that white line at the top where the light is hitting the eye. And I think that's enough green. There we go. That's just giving it a little bit more a bit more oomph. But it still looks quite quite 2D because I think it needs that little bit of brown again in the corners just to give it that oomph because we're starting to look a bit cartoonish. So I'm just taking the brown again and I'm going to put with a fine needle just a little bit in this corner here. underneath that white line just a tiny little bit in the corner I don't want too much I just want enough just so you can see it's there now I'm just going to go over with my thick needle because we're starting to look a bit frayed at the edges and it's difficult to see when it's like that so I'm just going to poke the excess fibres back in a bit And again, I've got just a few white fibres over the black. Just give them a little snip and poke them back in. So I am going to go back in with the black. And I'm just going to take a small roll of it. And I'm going to go back in underneath that eye again. down the side it's quite quite a lot down the side she's a 
pick one for a minute. a bit more oomph I think okay going at the front it's just a little bit let's put my fibre in half and then I can do well, that didn't work <laughs> it doesn't always work sometimes they lift out I'm just going to widen this bit here just a little that's it that's just what I wanted now I don't need much more around the front so and I'm not worried about these stray fibers is like I said I'm gonna I can trim them off so you don't have to stick every single fiber into your felt I'm just going back up the top here underneath those white highlights that I put in just to remind the eye that it's there let's frame that eyeball a bit more all these little bits that we're trimming off because you know waste not want not as they say and there's the bits I can use they go back in the pot these bits I can't really use so I'm going to trim them and just blow them away just give it a little <laughs> is it a trim as I said these scissors are godsend very easy to use Right. so we're going to take a little bit of that black that we've just trimmed off and just give that pupil a wake up again just slightly go over the white with a hint of the Alright, the black even. Oh, stray fibre. Okay, now I will probably spend another 10 15 minutes just tidying the fibres up, just making sure that the lines are as crisp or blended like this bit here as they can be. And there you have it, the start of the eye. I hope you found that useful. I hope that it gives you an insight into how I work and how for me, colour is the most important thing. Colour is what deceives your eye into believing it's 3D when it's only 2D and it brings your work to life okay thank you very much for watching see you soon bye